Diagnosing a patient with COVID-19 could soon be as easy as getting the person to breathe into a tube and getting the results in under a minute. That's right. Well, take a look. This is our colleague, science correspondent Audrey Tan, taking the breathalyzer test. Developed by a spin-off company from the National University of Singapore, it's still at a prototype stage. Mm, but it has so far achieved an accuracy rate of more than 90% during a pilot clinical trial involving 180 patients at the National Centre for Infectious Diseases. Researchers will continue to fine-tune the algorithm using data collected from the next phases of the trial. Well, the breathalyzer test looks pretty straightforward and Audrey certainly looks uh, far less anxious than me when I had a COVID-19 swab test a few weeks ago. I remember that and you narrated the experience to me as well. I narrated you. Yes, you did. <laughs> now let's bring in Audrey so she can uh, share more about the breathalyzer test. Uh, Audrey, hello. Explain the steps to us, Audrey. As Olivia said, it looked straightforward and painless. Yeah. Hi guys, yes, it's super straightforward and, and painless, as you said. Uh, all you need to do is, uh, first you use a disposable mouthpiece and then you attach it to this machine, which is a high precision breath sampler. And your exhaled breath is collected and fed into a machine known as the mass spectrometer. And uh, there'll be some machine learning and an algorithm inside that processes the data and gives you the reading in less than a minute. So right now, the reading is the entire process of reading it is not yet uh, automated, but researchers are working on it. So you can get the reading, as in you can interpret the readings really easily. I see. Well, Audrey, this test registers uh, chemical changes in a patient's breath. But how can that diagnose COVID-19 compared to, you know, the more established COVID-19 tests like the PCR and rapid antigen tests? Okay, sure. So maybe before I go into how this breathalyzer test uh, detects COVID-19, I can just give a brief overview about the other two tests that you mentioned and how they differ. So mm -hmm. for PCR tests, they, uh, the polymerase chain reaction test actually picks up viral genetic material in a patient sample. So that's why the nasal, nasal pharyngeal swaps are needed. Uh, it detects the viral genetic material or RNA. For rapid antigen tests, they pick up viral proteins. So the virus manufactures these proteins based on what their genetic material tells them. So for this particular breathalyzer test, it's slightly different because it registers, um, it detects these things called volatile organic compounds in human breath. And these are particles that we all breathe out every day um, because of biochemical reactions in our human cells. So, but the thing is the VOC signature from a healthy person breath would be different from a person with a sickness. And depending on your disease or illness that you have, each signature is different. Like you produce different amounts or quantities or even types of VOCs depending on what illness you have. So based mm -hmm. on this knowledge, the researchers tailored this algorithm to be able to pick up COVID-19 patients uh, and based on the unique breath signature that patients would have when they have um, this respiratory disease. Right. So Andre, this breathalyzer test uh, is still undergoing trials. If it's proven successful, will it completely replace the swap tests? Uh, I think right now this is highly unlikely. Uh, the PCR test is still considered the gold standard test um, because this would be the, the test to help avoid uh, the false negatives. So you don't want to miss out diagnosing a patient because that could lead new outbreaks. So um, based on what NCID, the National Center for Infectious Diseases told me, they said that this breathalyzer test could potentially be used as a screening tool Although to confirm a COVID-19 diagnosis, they would still need to go for PCR tests. But uh, I think the authorities and the scientists and clinicians here are still actively looking and analyzing all these rapid tests to see how they could supplement uh, PCR testing in, in the national scale. Mm. Mm. Well, I appreciate the time, uh, Audrey, for speaking with us and thank you for coming on to the show. We've been speaking to our colleague, science correspondent, Audrey Tan. Now, you can read more on this breathalyzer test over at straightstimes.com.